Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'd like to talk today about uh, the confession of Prince Talal Abdul Aziz and about the destruction of the Khalifa in uh, 1934. Prince Talal Abdul Aziz was the 20th son of the late Saudi King Abdul Aziz. Prince Talal was born in uh, 1931. His mother was an uh, Armenian woman with the name Munahir. Munahir was uh, regarded by British diplomats in Saudi, one of uh, King Abdul Aziz's most favorite wives. Prince Talal said in an interview that his father, King Abdul Aziz, was a British employee and that he was paid by them. Well, let's uh, listen to uh, what he said in, uh, in that interview. Mm. يعني بمعنى لو كانوا أقوياء كنا ترددنا في الإخدام على الشراء على منطقة الأحساء اللي هي فكا فكان يهاد الإنجليز على حساب القوة الضاربة الموجودة في داخل بلاده اللي هي الأتراك هل صحيح كان يتقاضى راتب من البريطانية؟ أنا نعم كان يتقاضى راتب وكان الراتب هذا هو أنا موجود نظري الآن لما أنظر هذا الراتب هو مثل القروض القروض التي تمنع من الدول الغنية للدول الفقيرة يعني لم يكن هذا الراتب بمثابة يعني إسكات للملك أو يعني نوع من شراء الولاء ممكن ممكن أنه هدف الإنجليز طبعا معقول يعطوا راتب 35 في ذلك الوقت الإنسان في الصعرة مبلغ رحم أن ممكن يعطوها كذا لوجه الله لا هم يعطوه لغرضا The kingdom Saudi came into existence because the English supported the Arab uh, Wahhabi rebels against the Khalifa. And this is how they destroyed the Khalifa from within. The English and the Americans supported these Wahhabi rebels led by Mohammed, Mohammed ibn al Saud with money and weapons to fight and destroy the Khalifa. They supported the family al Saud and their Wahhabi sect. Like how the English and Americans supported Al Qaeda to fight the regimes in Afghanistan, and how they supported the rebels in Libya, and how they support uh, the rebels in uh, Syria today. With, of course, the full support of their earlier creation, the Zionist Saudi regime. The reason why they support the rebels today is all for the Zionist cause to create the greater Israel in the future and to destroy the Islamic unity more and more, step by step, by letting fight each other based on different interpretations of the Hadith or different interpretations of the Quran. That the Wahhabis are a Zionist creation can be proved by one of uh, the fatwas done by one of the most important Wahhabi scholars Al-Albani. This Wahhabi scholar Al-Albani declares that it's over for the Palestinians to stay in Palestine. I uh, show you the, the, this fatwa. He said in front of a lot of witnesses that all Muslims in occupied land and also the remaining Palestinians in Palestine are obligated to leave completely. The Wahhabis also declared that everybody who do not support their interpretation of Islam are kufr, unbelievers, and that's allowed to kill them and to take their properties, women and children. It's one of the signs of uh, the last days that Muslims are calling uh, to call each other unbelievers. Now, there are uh, a lot of different kinds of interpretations of the Quran and uh, the Sunnah and the, and the Hadith. It's only to Allah and to judge who is a real Muslim and who is not. We cannot do it. It's, uh, it's, it's, you must see the Islam like, uh, like uh, one beats with uh, the sand. The sand is uh, existing on a lot of uh, different uh, and uh, small parts of uh, sand, but all together they are defending uh, the land against the sea. And that's also how it must be with uh, the Muslims. So you've got a lot of interpretations, but all together we are that, 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 that beach who prevent the sea to come in. The Quran calls to think and to think about the Quran itself and not to follow uh, and to believe with the tradition of uh, our fathers and their fathers and their fathers' fathers and their fathers' fathers' fathers. The only sunnah which is for Muslims to follow is to follow the noble and good character of the Prophet and the Prophets peace be upon them. There's no other sunnah. 
When the reset of Imam pray like uh, the Prophet Salam prayed, then uh, the meaning of that is that we pray with the right intention. No prayer is valid with, uh, with no right intention. So first we must uh, purify ourselves with, uh, with the right intention and to clean our body with the right intention and then go to prayer with the right intention. Without the right intention, uh, no prayer is uh, valid. So when we have to pray like Prophets prayed for Allah Sallallahu Then we must do it with the same attention as how he prayed. The discussion about how to pray, how uh, where you must place your head, or how far your feet must be from each other, or how high uh, you must uh, do your hands, uh, that is uh, not an uh, important uh, discussion. <clears throat> the truth about that shall uh, return. What's important is that we are not going to fight about this little things what we do different, uh, the Shias, uh, they uh, place their head on, uh, on a stone, on the, the Sunnahs on the carpet or on the ground. That's not an interesting discussion about who is doing the right uh, prayer. What's important is that we are Muslim and that we have to be uh, united with each other. Because when we are going to fight each other about this kind of uh, different uh, things, then uh, the Dutch also explore this, uh, this uh, difference and uh, let us fight with each other. A lot of uh, different kind of groups, a lot of different kind of interpretation, and there is no Sunnah, there is no Hadith which exactly describe how to pray. So we can let it and wait until the truth about it is uh, revealed again. So we have to unite. Because otherwise the Dashiell is going to destroy the Umar more and more and then there is no Umar anymore and then the whole world is one big prison led by uh, the Dashiell. Now one of the signs of the one-eyed Dashiell is the Pharaonic obelisk. On the sermon, uh, on the last sermon held by the Prophet, uh, peace be upon him, Omar Arafat, the Prophet led for us the harsh and uh, some important symbols in that. One of the important symbols is the obelisk in Yamanat. And uh, we Muslim, Muslims have to stone that obelisk shaped Yamanat to humiliate Shaitan. The obelisk is the holy pillar of Dajjal's kingdom. And you can see them everywhere, everywhere you can find uh, these obelisks. Just think about uh, Washington, the, the biggest obelisk of uh, the world. The Saudi regime uh, replaced this obelisk-shaped Yamaras in uh, 2004 into three meaningless walls. On this way, they support the kingdom of Dasha because there is no obelisk anymore to stone on the ash, so we cannot humiliate the shade on it. And instead of uh, stoning this overshaped Jamarat, yeah, we give him now an honor on the hash on Mount Arafat because they placed an obelisk on Mount Arafat, an obelisk shaped thing on Mount Arafat, where uh, the Prophet Muhammad held his last uh, sermon and where he declared that Allah perfected the religion for humanity. So everything what is done after it, what is changed after it, is an invention. So replacing the obelisk into meaningless walls and to place an obelisk on Mount Arafat is an invention. And uh, they swapped uh, very important symbols uh, from humiliation yeah, to, to honor the, the, the shaitan. So this uh, kingdom of Saudi uh, really destroyed uh, the hash and uh, this uh, Wahhabi sect did uh, a lot of wrong things uh, to the Ummah. So I cannot say, I cannot declare them uh, as unbelievers, but I can uh, say that, uh, that there are uh, some important things changed by them. There are some things very, 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 very wrong. Well, I hope that you both think uh, about this and uh, I wish you peace and uh, a lot of knowledge. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.